Hey, folks, as you can see, I have Valentine back with me. It's been a few months, three or four or five months since uh, we made our last video. And today he's going to talk about walking by faith, which I think is very interesting. We've been talking a little bit here uh, leading into the uh, recording of the video. And he has some interesting things to share, including the ho that Hawaii won the Little League World Series. But there that's not the main topic of this. It's walking by faith, Hawaiian style. There Valentine. you go. Valentine. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, yeah, Hawaiian style is going to go universal language around the, the planet because people understand what that means. The Polynesians, the people on the mainland, everybody, the world comes to us here in Hawaii. So aloha to everyone this morning, this afternoon in different parts of the world, at night in different parts in Italy. Say what Mario over there and uh, Amatra, you know, Amira, you know, all, all these beautiful souls around the planet, all the light workers, the enlightenment souls. We need to gather all these earth angels and put things together in a good way, you know, Hawaiian style and universal style. Yeah, I just happened to be in Hawaii for 30 years, going on 30 years, Rob, but wow. traveling the world in the meantime. And you don't miss New Jersey? <laughs> No, I don't. I hate to tell you, it's nice to visit, but it's nice to go back home into Hawaii. Where do people go to me since you said visit? It's my mentor, Thomas, says to me, David, so when you coming home? I said, I've been already on that part of the world. I'm not coming home. My home is a Hawaii. I'm in different, different areas in Europe and south of France. I'm going in that direction. India's calling me and saying, are you going to come to India? I mean, th th this is what I'm getting called. So I done my East Coast. Uh, I had my family and everything there, you know, in Boston. My brother, the doctor, Dr. Sunshine, vitamin D. I have family over there. I grew up and all. Uh, but the changes that happened, don't get me wrong. I see New York all the time in Jersey. And people love being with colorful people from the East Coast, from Jersey. Where are you from? They love your accent. They love the way you talk when I speak to you on the, on the uh, videos. Where's he from? That guy, Ron. Oh, you know something? From California. The guy says to me, his name's John. He's coming in next week to do this incredible uh, uh, helping out, right, in, in his situation. And uh, with this house and ref help, help what they need have done there. And so he goes, I go, hey, you know, check on um, my videos. And I go, Ron Van Dyke. He goes, you know, I've heard of him. I said, he's a whistleblower. Oh, I really heard of him there. I know I heard of him. I know what Rod's doing. I'm going to check your videos. I'm going to see you next week live. <laughs> okay, well, you, you uh, said the title is Walk by Faith, and you were yes. sharing some things as before we started recording. Uh, yes. And I'd like you to repeat some of those things about the Mercedes and about some of the other things that are happening with you uh, in Hawaii. Yeah, so what's happening is, Ron, I mean, since 1991 full-time, I walk by faith, I travel to different countries, uh, I've been very fortunate in the United States and in Europe, but this is without, you know, having all these resources and all, you know, I worked on Wall Street, I did many things, you know, I was a money market researcher, I was with, you know, liability adjuster, broadcasting, television, movies, modeling, I mean, I was always a spiritual model. And that's the walk by faith. I did a lot of things in the world. People go, what are you, a millionaire? A trillionaire? What do you do for work? People in, in Madison, New Jersey, I'm not kidding you, the guy, they're very well off. These are very established people. What do you do? You know, are you, you must be a millionaire because we never see, we see you just helping people all the time. Are you a philanthropist? That's what people think. Other countries are call me, can you help me? And they're asking me for donations in, in India. And the guy goes, Will you donate to my uh, spiritual uh, uh, center over here? Uh, would you WhatsApp me and send a donation? People in Indonesia are saying, but you gotta help me. We have terrible things going on in Indonesia. They think I'm a philanthropist, but I'm not. Well, you know, it's funny because, uh, not funny actually, I have this man that uh, was writing to me in from Central Africa, and he yeah. runs an orphanage for, for children. Yeah. And uh, he uh, said, I need help with the children. And I, and I donated $25, which is a lot of money based on my income and my responsibilities. 
Yeah. And then I started getting hit with people from all over that part of Africa wanting money. So, and they come back, they want over $1,000. I don't even get $1,000 a month, which may right. sound like a lot to an African, right. but it's not a lot to somebody that lives in the United States. So, yes, and because of what you just stated, because I'm from Hawaii especially, oh, he, the guy even tells me from India, you're very rich. Please send me donation for my center. You're a very rich man. <laughs> <laughs> because I live in Hawaii, I'm walking by faith. They have no idea. I do, I, I will be a voice and I will help them out with centers and connections of people. I weave together people with their gifts and I do know connections of people to help different parts of the world or on the planet. I am very, I'm very gifted in that way. One that sees to help those souls. Yes, I will do that and I will communicate to them but I have India blew, blew up my whole thing. I got like thousands of people want to come on the, on the messenger. I can't, I have to have a whole 12, 12 people as a staff to get just for India. The 1.5 billion people, one point, they're the second most in the world outside of China. You know what I mean? Once yeah. you hit India, we're talking about Mother Teresa and we were talking about, uh, well, Deepak Chopra, that he was having a hard time with India and everything. And people say he's very dark, he's in the dark. Well, his shadow part needs to come into the light. Since the people are saying that he's dark, he's not in the light. Well, maybe before he got here, he went, we're all in the light. But when we get here, we, we have to transition into golden light, in their purity. And I'm going to talk about this with the walk of faith. So Yeah, well, tell, tell, it, tell me the story, tell everyone the story about yeah. the, the car. Yeah, so the car, I, I walk by faith. I mean, I, I happened to get, I, I, you know, when I, when, I, when I got injured and everything, meaning as a frozen shoulder, I get transportation through my health care and stuff like that, and I make the most of what I can do at the doctor's office. But by faith, I just make phone calls. People, I, wherever I go, I have a lit, lit, people will say, oh, they look at me and they go, I go, are you going down in this direction? I can take a bus. I could take an Uber, but my my walk of faith is to be with the people. And they've been they've been asking for some type of encouragement, some type of liftment about their family, about their children, about their grandparents. And that's who I that's who I walk with on a daily basis since 1991, Ron. Full okay, time. let me ask you again for the third yeah. time now. Tell us about the the Mercedes. Okay, yeah. Well, so, so I'm in conversation because there was one healer that uh, you know, uh, you know, noticed me. Says I work with all these different healers and all, and and, and went through a very difficult thing. He said, "Look, I have a Mercedes, and I drive a new Mercedes, but I have a '68 Mercedes. Her name's Tiffany, by the way. If <laughs> she's gonna get a kick out of it. and David, and 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 her husband David, and and she drives the Mercedes and everything. She says, "Look." He's going to have to get another car. So you've been asking, Valentine. So I want to give to someone. I said, well, you may need it for your resources. And no, she said, I need, I, I want it to somebody that can really appreciate the Mercedes. But it's got like $5,000 worth of work, maybe even more. We'll tell you what's wrong with it. But if you start the car and you use it locally in the area, you have a car that you could drive back. And forth. That's a walk of faith. People offer things. I don't, you know, and, and if it's if it's done in from the heart and in a good way of release and it doesn't affect anyone, then I'll accept it. But people have been offering me cars for a long time and I still tell them, you need it. I don't need it. <laughs> Let me ask you a question about Hawaii. Yeah. Are there are any of the islands connected to each other via a bridge or some kind of a roadway where you can literally drive from one island to another? No, you, you can get on a, a like we, we're going to have the super ferry come here. That was the reason for the super ferry it, or any kind of transportation. Well, they don't want to hear that, but they, they, they kind of want the super ferry to come back in now because, no, we have waterways where we have to go by boat. We have to go by, it's called the, the trilogy. They have uh, all these uh, tandems, they call them. You know, like can, canoes, they go by canoe to each island. They go by, by, by boat, 
and they have that super ferry that they want to bring in. And, and Molokai and uh, Kauai and Maui, they stopped them. They, I mean, they literally stopped them and said, we don't want you here because what it is is it'll affect their economy. It will help their economy, but then it'll expose that they're getting money from the government and everything. They don't want to work. I was there at Molokai, nothing against them, but the people, they're getting, they're, because their their the Aina was taken in the Hawaii, so they feel that the government owes them, so they don't want to work. They oh, wow. Work. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, they don't want to work. They want well, to there's work. a lot of people in this country, in the United States, in the mainland, that don't want to work either. And, and no. you know, they, they want to, I, I believe that people that can't work should be helped. But yeah. people that can work should work, and then and contribute you, to the to the society you know, as a whole. Yes, but I'll tell you this, and just so you know, now Hawaiian came to me locally and said, "Look, Valentine, I, I, I was in the store. I'm getting chicken skin now. The Holy Spirit's come through me when 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 you get that, uh, you know, the the goosebumps. Right. It's getting very important to say this. the The Hawaiian people don't get me wrong; they're wonderful and everything. And he was a chef. I want to work. I don't want to collect the check. They don't want to collect. They would rather have work in like the super ferry coming or something to bring resources to their island. Like you said, the channels to get to the island. No, you got to go by plane. There's no bridges. There's no bridge to connect no island. There's only boats and air, air, air airlines. That's it. That's wow. it. Oh, and canoes. What they're used to. Can you imagine? They get on a canoe race with a hundred boats come around the world with, with the, uh, the champs that gave me the shirt from, uh, fr from, from the competition that they won from Chicago, the Polish front, you know, <laughs> gave me the hat and everything. And, and the thing, he goes, Hey, I'm the uh, world champion. He goes, and I said, I'm in the hall of fame. What I did as a ball player. Oh, well, I'm in the hall of fame for, 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 for canoeing and winning the race last year in Hawaii with a hundred boats. And they go 41 miles across from Molokai to Oahu. And it takes them like maybe seven, eight hours of rowing. Could you imagine that? Wow. Could you imagine that? And they train all year long to do this competition. And they're warriors. Let me tell you, these guys from around the world, it doesn't matter. In the Hawaii, the Pop, these, these are warrior men with angel wings. I'm telling <laughs> you. And they're warriors. They're, they, they're, they're warriors like they, 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 they really take care of themselves and their, their mana, their energy, and the aina. They know how to work the land and appreciate the environment like the Hokulea I spoke about. A million people come and see them in 25 countries. They're still traveling around for education with the children. And people around the world don't even know what the Hokulea is about until I talked about it. It's called Rainbow of Roses on the video that Ron and I did. Take a look at it about sustainability, about electric cars. That's another thing is, the reason I don't want a gasoline car, which if it comes, okay, I'll, I'll look at it. Electric car, I, I would like to, like the leaf I drove for four and a half months given to me in Molokai for taking care of this property, right? Uh, you know, five acres and, and about 200 deer when they cross together, but they're golden. They're golden from India, a gift from India, which they have no predators. So they got 60,000 deer that I was with, which are the guardians of the land in Molokai. They're not allowed to hunt them, and the Hawaiians are upset, and the local people. Why can't we sustainability? Now, don't get me wrong. They don't have the finances and all, and they regret that they didn't bring the super ferry. A lot of people, they don't want changes. But you got to make some type of changes for the betterment for your humanity. If People that don't need to work and need the resources, then the government can help them. Wonderful. But the people, like I said, this Hawaiian brother, and I knew with, with, with Hanalei, uh, he said, uh, what do you mean he doesn't know me? Tell him I, my mom, you know, they all go through the coconut wire. You know, like in the community, they all know each other, right? We call it the coconut wire, right? Mm -hmm. So you have coconuts. <laughs> Lime in the coconut, right? So... What they do is run is he really wanted work. He said, Valentine, I need help. He saw me in a leaf car, and especially when I'm driving an electric car, 
Everyone thinks I'm like this celebrity. Uh, when I'm walking by faith, the people that they know are very, very well off. So they think that I'm involved with the people, of Earth, which I am, but I don't have the resources at all and have an aviation company and got $50 million. You know what I mean? But I know the resources of people that have, I've been with philanthropists that it said to me in New Jersey, he, he invited me in. He, he was reading letters from around the world, Ron, a philanthropist, let me in with all his dogs and everything. He said, I want to talk to you. I don't know who to give the money to. He says, I, I have all these letters and people are telling me stories. I don't know who to believe. So I want to talk to you and show you what, what I'm, I have all this money. I told people I want to give everything away. I'm a philanthropist. And he was very hidden out. He allowed me in with his wife, but you should see what they had to do in order to give this money to people. He was, he, he didn't know, he didn't know who to, who to give it to because he, he heard all the heartthrobs. And, and real life situations, but he didn't know who to believe. And so he asked me and I told him what I saw. Yeah, as a Well, again, I'm gonna go back to the, the story that I told about this guy in Africa that I donated $25 to. He and yeah. I had a lot of things going back and forth and all yeah. of a sudden YouTube or I guess it was Facebook took his page down and he was under investigation. I don't know any more detail than that, but all of his comments were wiped clean. It left all of my comments up, all of my responses to him, but all of his words were erased. And right. I don't know if he's arrested or what. Uh, right. But he might have been. He might have been a con person, and I might have been the victim of his con, cost yes. twenty five dollars, which isn't a lot of money. But not to expose somebody that's not in their truth, I'll tell you. You did the truth serum in Africa. Where again, I have this in India, but I believe the people in India. These are very. There's more enlightened, more spiritual. I would think they would be in Africa too. But you have the good, the bad, and the ugly with Clinton everywhere, Stone. everywhere. Yeah, like yeah. I told you with the philanthropist, he. I, I was shocked that he allowed me in on the property, and the dogs. They were almost. These were very. The dog tried to try to on the way out to the car, try to snip me. One one of these, you know, uh, it was a black. I just remember being black, and he and went to snip. And I love animals, but he's thinking I'm getting away. Energetically, he's thinking, "Well, why are you leaving? We want you to stay." And he tried to grab me. Well, yeah. that's nor I. I I'm around dogs were in the apartment complex where I live, and 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 oh, many of know. them are exactly that way. They'll snip. Some of them are barkers. Some of them are really quiet. Uh, yeah. But dogs have a tendency to, they do everything by smelling. Yes. You know, they're yeah. constantly sniffing. But I, I believe he didn't do it because he felt that I should really stay longer to help the philanthropist about the money situation because he was having a Harry carry himself. He, he was carrying too much burden with all this money, what I call zeros. How many zeros do you need for your trillion dollar account or millions and billions of dollars account. And I'll give you an example. I was, le I was left a lot of money. My father left everything to me and the family to this day will not, uh, will not give me what, what my father left to me because they said, if he gets a hold of this, he'll give it away. I would protect my mom, I would protect the family. And we're talking large sums of money to help the world. But they wanted to use it for greed for themselves so I still have to walk by faith. My father said, I thought you were making it up the whole time. His name is Frank Edward Holland, right? Francis, this is his Francis. That's his, really his name it, it, during the war and everything. Well, he, he was a miser and he saved everything. He saved everything in, in a 50 year period to give to his family. Well, it's supposed to be shared. But because of what he saw in the family that people weren't sharing, he made a decision to leave everything. He said, I, I entrust all to you. But when I came home, when he, was good, when he knew he was going to leave the planet, and to this day, the family will not come forward. They're involved with a conspiracy. My brother calls me and says, your brother said you, I'm in a conspiracy, you know, that he's in a conspiracy. Well, they are, but they, they won't come forward because they don't want to release the money for me to help people. Now, that's really a terrible thing in a family you grow up with, have family reunions. And I'm going to bring it up because people will not come. 
They, they'll go six foot under and, and hide it with secrets to God and will not be uh, admit to you and, and will not speak with you and play this secret game. Well, secrets get found out. And those, and those that do the right thing, the right thing will happen in the flow. Now, how come that came out? I waited for 10 years to heal the situation. No, 30 years for my family to come forward. They're not going to. Like I said, they're going to go six foot under. And, and, and maybe at the last moment, when, when hopefully, like you said, from above, that the Lord shows them a, a vision or something to tell them to make, make things right before they leave. That's what my father was to do. He started handing me the rings I gave to him, the gold. I gave him the seven ring thing that I had, right? And he said, I don't need this any longer. The soul knows when they're going to leave the planet. And then he comes to me. He comes to me at night when, when my, brother, my father had to come from the darkness into the light. Because a lot of people don't go into heaven right away or in the light. They think they do, but they don't. They have to go through a, like a, a schooling into another dimension before they can go into that purity and that divineness of where we came from in the heavens. I don't know if you know that, but people think, oh, right away, we all go to heaven. No, we don't. I, I hope that we do. No, most of us get recycled back to earth. That's what I'm saying. And the reason I brought up about my, my own family and, and said, my, my brother said to me, you could be an intelligent evangelist, which I'm not interested in, but that, that's the energy that I, I would, this gift that I had for the Holy Spirit, for God, for the source. He said, you, he said, if people, you be, you, you be, this is 17, 18 years old, right? He said, people would send millions of dollars to you. He said, what would you do with it? And I said, I just smiled at him. He goes, yeah, right? You'd give it away, wouldn't you? And I, and I, and I looked at him like, I, well, more, I said, I didn't have to say anything. It was just telepathic. I looked straight at him, soul to soul. He says, well, you don't even have a pot to piss in. So why don't you keep some for yourself? That's why he won't give me the money. Because I want to give it out to the world, to communities and families, like such your work, what you're doing. If, if I have the capacity, and I know other people do in the world, that's why I said I know how to weave together people that have money to help causes. And, and and this thing about we don't have enough, we have plenty enough. There's so much. Oh, if, if all the money was distributed evenly to all the people on earth, everyone would be a multimillionaire. Yes. There's no lack of money. Yes. Money can be created out of nothing. It already exactly. is. <laughs> yeah. And so that's why I walk by faith, Ron. And they said, well, if he gives it, he'll give it away. So what I decided, my walk of faith, they know I, what I do. They're, they're very, they get very jealous and envious because they have to work nine to five or, or around the clock on the materialistic plane to get what they need. I walked through it, but I got pushed out for the enlightenment to help humanity. We have to help humanity regards to waking, not only waking up, I believe the ones that are awake will make a difference on the planet. We need to unite those forces around the planet and continue to do good works through the heart through through our communities and our families and i believe that the people are showing that now because of the evolution of what's going on with the cleansing on the planet right now ron well i hope that cleansing you know really starts producing repentance on the part of many i i don't want to see people hurt not even yep. the elite i'd like yep. to see them repent and help or help others instead of hoarding everything for themselves like like you're saying uh, some members of your family have have made it their practice to hoard yes you know let's share let's 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 lift others up yes and what it's not only my family the reason i brought it out is all these families that keep these secrets that that br tie them down i don't know how they can live with themselves knowing you grew up together and that you would take something of someone's inheritance that they would need for their livelihood to go and help people. If that's what they choose to do as a ministry, to go help the planet, to help humanity and dedicate their life to doing it, then you bless them and, 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 and help them, you know, give them the resources that my father's wishes to go forward because you're going to have to answer for it 
later on. So why don't you do it now and make things right? And that's what I'm saying. We all have to make things right in our families, in our communities, from the grandparents on down, from the infant on up to the grandparents. That whole evolution of, otherwise we're gonna get recycled back and it's gonna to be too late when the person says, oh, uh, forgive me that I didn't know any better. Forgive me. Well, it, it's too late. You're going to get recycled now, right? Yeah, well, we've been recycling and recycling, as in well, evolutionary recycling. Well, let's talk about karma. We don't want to cause more karma on the planet. You, we want to do the opposite, walk by faith. I walk and by bring faith. blessings. <laughs> But blessings, yeah. I mean, to not have a car since 1991. Now, I have people in my life, women in my life, Mar Margetta has a car. So she comes around, you know, she, she does what she can do. But when I walk by faith in Europe for healing purposes, I meet with the people in the community and they drive me to the events. I don't want to, but I'm to be among the people. It's not about that I need to be driven because I'll get there. It's what I share with that person at that moment. I'm living in the moment, and that's the most joyous place to be. Is when you're, I'm so filled with the spirit of, of happiness when, when we're living in the moment and we're touching lives with a smile. Let's try to bring. Okay. Things. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, people say, how do you get around? Like, like it's almost like being. Um, it's almost like candy camera. I look at people's reaction. What, you don't have a car? Like people, people won't even drive. You have a car? I go, they have no idea that I've been walking this since 1991 full time to help humanity. I don't say anything. I could get on a bus. I could get a Uber right down the way. I could, I could get on a bus, but I don't because I know there's someone that we need to touch that day. For example, um, Monica, Monica uh, in, in, in the resorts and all. These people who are coming from around the world, uh, even like with Prince Fielder, he made a $100 million contract, and he's so upset that he can't play baseball. But all these zeros, all these zeros, and all his wife says, well, he's very shy. Yeah, but I'm there for the healing to help you and your husband, and, and people aren't listening. You know? They think, oh, because I was a ball player, as a pitcher. I want to get back to that, by the way. Oh, the world champs. Oh, I yeah, you, yes, good. Yeah, the world champs, the Hawaiian, you see it there? The world champion, Little League World Championship, where I pitched a no-hitter all by strikeout in New York. Well, these guys in Hawaii, uh, the, the, the coach, right, Coach Oda there, you'll see, and he, I told him, would you sign it? He goes, well, all the signatures are there. I just wanted to be with the kids, with the coaches. First, I approached the coaches. I was with the mayor. The mayor... The, the former mayor sent the mayor out that's now mayor, Mike Victorino, is Shane Victorino's dad. So he was a coach for the Little League. Well, we gave such a reception to these Little League champs and Coach Oda, right? Um, Gerald, his name's Gerald. Very, very humble. I've never met, and I'm not kidding you, not only with the world champs. Look, world champs coming to Maui. Look, you see it there? The champs are coming <laughs> to Maui. Coming to Maui. Does it say Maui? Here. Yep. Then it here. does. Yeah, you see it, right? So anyway, I have never met such – these are 11 to 13-year-olds, so poised, so humble, and so spiritual. I've never met ball players like this before because they're in the Hawaiian Islands. They grew up very differently. And they know how to treat people in a very different way. And they're on a world stage in the World Series. So I make a phone call because the St. Louis Cardinals had the Little Leaguers, right? So I got everybody going. Mike Victorino, I, I called, you know, to get Shane involved. But they have this election. He just won yesterday, 70% out of 30. Well, he's been in, in, in right? So then Kurt, Kurt Suzuki, which he's with the uh, – uh, he's a catcher with the Atlanta Braves now. Okay. I'm with the parents, and I'm trying to get a, a surprise for the world, world champs to get them to the World Series in L.A. and Boston. Well, nobody would step up because all the professionals felt that 
it would take a lot to get the team over there. And I, I asked, did they get any offers to go? I think that they're so exhausted from traveling and doing what they did that they were glad to be home to watch the World Series like me <laughs> in Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm glad I brought that up. I'm glad because it was real important. That's another walk of faith. While I'm here with the baseball, I didn't tell them anything I did. My water bottle, actually, uh, I had, because um, it was very hot. It was in the afternoon between 1 and 4. I was with them, right, One thirty and 4. I didn't tell them I was a ball player. The, the organizer says, who are you? I said, well, I'm with Pastor Lucky. I do ministry work. I didn't even, and then he sees my thing, Hall of Fame nomination, baseball. He, said, he, he sends it on Facebook with all the kids. He's the real deal. I didn't, I didn't, you know, people got, he's the real deal. Now, he's not telling you a story. I, I have, I have all pictures and filmed him and talked to him. You know what I mean? Like that. <laughs> so I'll tell you, I really enjoyed the fact that we got a chance to speak a little further. Um, and I tell you, it, it was really, really joyful for me to be with, um, the little leaguers because of what I did as an athlete is pitching a no hitter all by strikeout. Right. As we, as we did that video hall of fame nomination. Right. But to be around them with all the blue, the uniforms, it, it, I'll tell you, it brings back a, a fulfillment for me as a purity of the game is most important to me. Instead of this, the, 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 the game is so business business oriented and not fun oriented for the children and you could see it with the little leaguers on up the peewees they they groom them for something that that's why you have the tommy johns and all and it's very upsetting as a ball player to see all these warrior men suffering in the sports world not, not only in baseball but football the violent thing that goes on in football with the head injuries people need to to, to, to really protect their children to know what they're going into. And I was very fortunate that this scout from Pittsburgh warned me that I was too nice to get into this business and that you stay forward with this gift that God gave you. And I, I'm, I'm happy to see you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, th thank you, Valentine, for updating yeah. us. And, uh, you know, this has been an interesting conversation. And, Yes, it is a walk by faith, and you're an example of that journey. And so thank I thank you, you for sharing it with us. Thank you so much. And mahalo here from Hawaii, and we send our golden roses to your hearts and everyone you touch, and may you smile and be happy. <laughs> okay, and namaste. <laughs> yeah, namaste and aloha from and walk Hawaiian style universal. <laughs>